I'm Claudia Miranda here with Mary Gilmore, CEO of Amazing Awards. Mary? Hi, I'm Mary Gilmore, CEO of Amazing Awards, located here in District A. Our showroom is located off of FM 1960 Road West. We specialize in custom engraved gifts, plaques, trophies, and awards. Our company started in 2009. We are certified with the City of Houston as a woman and minority owned business. We're also registered with the State of Texas as a hub vendor. Come out and see us. Now we're going to go off to Council Member Helena Brown with her weekly update. Hi, Helena Brown here with this week's agenda report for January the 2nd. We had 23 items on this week's agenda, and I voted no to three of them. The first item, item number two, this is, uh, well, six years after 9-11, uh, the federal government, through the Department of Homeland Security, chose to sp spend $300,000 in 2007 for this uh, sophisticated information gathering software. And uh, now, another six years after that, I guess because the federal government has all this money to spend, um, chose to spend another $279,000 for additional uh, modules for this uh, software. And um, that's why I voted no to that. We need to, we can't continue to drag on this bleeding con continuously throughout the years. Um, on this uh, software that perhaps uh, we didn't use, use it uh, for six years after 9-11 and we've been using it and we need to uh, spend another $300,000 on it. You know, what? How, how is it really helping? We need to analyze that rather than continue to spend money in that regard for perhaps uh, non-priority non uh, risk management type uh, information gathering. Um, are we able to manage our risks that we face as a city? Uh, with less government or more cooperation and what really works best and we need to study those uh, questions. Item number six. This item uh, is spending of 1.5 million dollars on the for the purchase of 45 new vehicles. Now we see throughout the year these type of RCAs request for council action for the purchase of vehicles that are needed for the functioning of our city. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, these are new vehicles that are not being replaced. Uh, uh, old vehicles are not being replaced. They're adding on new vehicles for new projects for, for instance, code enforcement and regulation enforcement, permitting enforcement, that sometimes goes beyond uh, what perhaps we should be doing as a city. Recently, I want to say three weeks ago, we passed a, a purchase order for 10 vehicles for the regulation of our automotive industry uh, and now we see another 13 vehicles among these 45 new vehicles that are completely a uh, new addition to uh, the fleet and uh, we have 10 half ton crew, crew cab trucks and um, a full-size four-door sedan and uh, intermediate four-door, two intermediate four-door hatchbacks, all for the purchase. These all, all these 13 vehicles are for the for the regulation and um, inspection of the, of the automotive industries. And uh, we didn't have these vehicles for that previously, and yet they're having an additional fleet of vehicles for an increase in that respect. It's like are there a whole bunch of um, automotive industry crimes being committed that we have to increase uh, the, our fleet to that extent and costing taxpayers dollars. Uh, I don't know what p p percentage of that 1.5 million dollars we're spending in that regard but I think that's an outrage when we have a higher priority needs and the businesses in Houston are struggling. Item number eight is the last item. This is uh, amending an ordinance, uh, or actually the, the Houston Residential Energy Conservation Code, containing findings providing effective data and declaring an emergency. The Houston Residential Energy Conservation Code. Houston is the energy capital of the world. The fact that we have a residential energy conservation code is laughable. We are a prosperous city because we are the energy capital of the world. And for us to be talking about uh, this is going to uh, have a 30% reduction in energy consumption 
uh, via 5-10% increments. It's like, why are we doing this? Secondly, especially post uh, climate gate and the fact that uh, temperatures are fallen in the last 16 years, not risen, and we have air pollution under control, it's the lowest point ever. It's like, for some unknown uh, non-American agenda perhaps that's pushing this uh, conservation, conservation, and mandating it through these codes, especially at the city level, that enforces upon our freedoms to choose how much we want to spend on, on energy or if we want to conserve or not conserve in our homes. Is That's our choice and that should be left up to the individual residences, the homeowners, the developers, you know, how much they want to in, uh, invest in uh, conservation or uh, saving money uh, through, through lower energy use. That's the individual's choice. The business should not, the city of Houston should not be in the business of regulating that or mandating that. So it's really a sad day for Houston, I think, for us to even have something of this scale. The fact that we're slowly increasing um, the um, consumption or decreasing the consumption of our energy use as a mandate on, on the part of the city is really, really unfortunate. So uh, we need to look at this because uh, more is coming. And um, we need to make sure that uh, our voices are heard because if we want to. Uh, limit the choices for lower income families as well in terms of price for homes because sometimes these uh, lower efficiency, uh, higher efficiency uh, units uh, cost more uh, up front and that's going to be higher cost for the lower income folks if they don't choose to uh, want to invest in something like that. So something to look at. I'm Claudia Miranda, that's the report for this week, until next time.